Hey everybody, this is John Buck, back with another Array Signal Processing video. Uh, in this video we're going to start talking about detection theory, the idea that we're going to use the data from our array to look out at the world and try to detect whether something's present there or not. Uh, this is a the engineering version, common engineering version, of a more general problem known as a binary hypothesis test. Uh, so tonight, we'll, in this video, we'll start talking about that as a general idea in the framework for binary hypothesis test. Uh, then I'll do a follow-on video or maybe two videos uh, applying this to the idea of, of detecting signals with some of the models we've talked about so far in the class. So switching over to the, uh, the whiteboard to see uh, how this would work, the idea with detection theory is that we've got our array here uh, along the z-axis. This is our... Oh, meant to have that arrow on this line to show this is the z-axis. So here are our sensors, the same way we've had, measuring narrowband data x. And we've steered, you know, sort of showing our, our main lobe is this beam here. We're, we've steered it to look in a given direction. So we, in the framework we're going to use tonight, we're going to assume we know the look direction. And the question we're trying to answer, our goal is to say, well, is there something interesting out there in that look direction for a given direction? Now, in the real world, we don't usually know which direction to look. So I want to sort of frame this discussion by saying in a real system, we would have many different detectors for all different angles. We'd have many different beams looking out here and here and here and all these different places, each one of them running a detector. But for now, let's just focus on one beam at a time because then we'll, they'll all be doing the same idea in parallel. And so we're going to be listening to the signals that come in. If this were a, a passive sonar system listening and saying, well, is it just nice peaceful, you know, the noise due to nice peaceful waves out there. Or, you know, is there a ship or a fish or something I'm interested in making noise out there? So is there something driving along with its propeller here making a lot of noise that I can hear in this direction? So again, our, our basic decision is noise, like just the waves or maybe a few fish, or it depends on what we're, we're looking for, how we set up the test. But in this case, just noise, or are we saying uh, ship plus noise? Right, the waves would still be there, but is there a ship loud enough we can hear it when we look in this direction? How are we going to set this up? And then later, talk, see uh, in actual class, we'll see how do we use our beam former to do this better than we could with just one sensor at a time. Okay, well, as I mentioned just a minute ago, this is a uh, specific case of trying to make it listen to that data and make a decision of something we call binary hypothesis test or binary hypothesis testing. Um, and this goes back to classical statistical analysis. We're going to observe the data X from one of two hypotheses, generally labeled H sub zero or H sub one. Uh, in general, this one is often called the null hypothesis. And this one is called the alternate hypothesis. And we're going to have a model for the data. We're going to say, uh, using conditional probability density functions, we'll say I've got one model, f of x given h0 is true, or we're comparing that against f of x given h1 is true. We're saying one of these two models made the data, and our goal as engineers in a binary hypothesis test is to design a decision rule that takes the data and the models, and based on that tries to estimate which model generated the data. So in mathematical form, we need to come up with a function, g of x that takes the data, and it returns one of two things. It either says, I'm going to estimate h0, so I'm putting a little hat on here to make it clear this is my estimate. I'm like, these, these are the truth, I may not know the truth. And I'm going to say that whenever x is in some set d0. Otherwise, and, and if x is in another decision region, d sub 1, I'll guess that it came from H1. How do I come up with these decision regions? Well, that's the whole point of the game. Uh, but where that comes from generally is, is the, um, the model, the conditional probability densities uh, in general. And if, if I know anything in advance about how probable each of these two cases are, I may fold that in as well. Uh, and just to add a little more vocabulary here, these two, D0 and D1, are called the decision regions. I think of all the data I could see, whenever that data falls into one section D0, I'll call, uh, I'll say, I'll assume that's the, the data that 
most likely came from H0 and vice versa. In practice, this, this might be something as simple as a threshold. So I might say that if For example, this decision rule in practice might be something as simple as saying, if x is less than some threshold gamma, then, we, then we're going to guess h0. And if it's above gamma, then we'll say h1. So like in the example I showed you a minute ago, if things are relatively quiet, I'll say, well, it's probably just waves. That's the null case, the not very interesting case. If the thing, but when, when the received signal energy gets loud enough, I'll say there is a ship there. That's H1. We'll often we'll be using this so often, we'll often abbreviate this scalar version of the decision rule as sort of having both inequalities here and say this, this is my threshold decision, my shorthand saying if X is bigger than H0 or bigger than gamma, I'll say H1. If X is less than gamma, I'll say H0. So that's an, an example of how it goes. Uh, let's set up a little more vocabulary. So again, just to, to see how widely applicable this framework is, and although we'll be using it mainly for detector theories tonight, I want to give you a little pre appreciation uh, for other applications. So in general, the abstract version, we say H0 is the null hypothesis, and H1 is often called the alternate hypothesis. But And, and in the example we just saw, like in a sonar or radar type example, H0 will generally be our model that when we're looking out at the world, in a particular direction, there's only noise, and here we might say, well, there's an echo or a signal plus noise. Another example we are all much more familiar about now than we were a year ago is uh, disease testing. Say, so if I take a, go take a COVID test, right? In this case, H0 would be the the null case is that I'm healthy. That the PCR thing comes back and says we don't see any COVID-19. Uh, don't see any COVID DN we don't see enough COVID-19 DNA in your test, whereas H1 will say that there is, is the case when there is the COVID DNA they found in the PCR reaction, or equivalently for, for some of the other testing modalities. But this is the healthy case, and this is the case in which you're infected. Right? Uh, another case, this comes up all the time in a communication system. Your cell phone is doing this with, uh, with discrete or digital communications, too. Right, is that this is saying that the bit transmitted equals zero or the bit transmitted equals one. Right, and there, there are many other examples we can come up with. So many engineering and real world problems where we say I have to look at data and decide one of two possible things made this data, which one is my best guess as to what it was. Okay, so now we can talk about how do we characterize the performance of a binary hypothesis test uh, decision rule or detector, as we often call it, in, in electrical engineering? And so, as we said, there's uh, two possibilities. The truth could be H0 or H1, and then two possibilities for what our estimate or our decision is, H0 hat or H1. So there's a total of four possibilities. And if we say, if, if the truth is H1 in a, in a sonar type problem and we guess that, we say this is a detection. Right, this is a successful detection. In this case, uh, on the other hand, if, if the truth is there's nothing there but we have a, a detection when we shouldn't, if we make this is an error, and so this would be often called a false alarm. Right, we're saying there's something there when there's not. This is another error which is a misdetection. And then finally, there's the case where there's nothing there and we correctly decide there's nothing there. This is you know, a good situation to be in. We don't have a fancy name for it. Uh, but when we want to characterize the performance, all this stuff comes down to probability. And so uh, we often describe things like we can say, well, the probability of it, if we have a, a decision rule between D0 and D1, the probability of a detection, right, which is the probability that I say H1 when given that H1 is true, well, that would be the integral over the decision region one of the, the model, the conditional PDF for H1, right? If I take the integral of this PDF over a whole region, it gives me the probability of this event. And these are all the X's where I would say H1. So this is the probability of detection.
The other one, for this case here, for the false alarm case, probability of false alarm is the probability that we say H1, we estimate H1 when the truth is actually the opposite, it's H0. That's still the integral over the, the region where we're going to D1, the region we're going to say X1, but it's for the other conditional PDF. It's like saying that the data came from the null hypothesis but somehow got past our test. It got into the region that made us think it was from H1. And so this is the probability of false alarm. Or PFA, as it's off, P sub FA. This case here, the misdetection, well, that's the complementary probability of PD. We often say the probability of a miss, PM, is 1 minus PD, right? Which we could also say that's the probability the integral over region D0 of data that really came from H1, but it, it's unlikely enough that we thought it didn't. And so it, the data that's in this region D0 that makes us decide for H0. Uh, these also have other names I, sh I should mention just for general cultural relevance in, in different domains. So P in, in radar, sonar, what we call probability of false alarm is often called an alpha error in uh, statistical or medical tests. And besides an alpha error, it's sometimes called a type 1 error in the statistical literature, or also in a false positive. Right? Thinking of like the drug testing analogy, where we, we say somebody is sick even though they're actually not, and if H0 is that they're healthy, but we think they are infected, this would be a false positive. Whereas probability of a miss is sometimes called a beta error. Beta error. Other names for this, not surprisingly, type 2 error or false negative. All these are, are synonymous names depending on whether you come at this material from a biostats point of view, general statistics point of view, theoretical statistics, or false alarm and misses very much from the sonar and radar literature, which were one of the, the other uh, driving killer apps that, uh, that develop, pushed the development of this material in the uh, 1940s and 50s. Okay, so that's the background overview uh, for what's going on. Um, so next, I'm going to uh, show an example. In the next video, I'll do a, a quick example of what this looks like, uh, and then we'll talk about how it applies to our arrays case.